All right, gamers, welcome to One More Game Podcast. This is episode 13. It is the 23rd of May, 2022. I am your host, The Stroke, with my co-host here, Swift. What's up, man? What's up, buddy? I'm, uh, I'm doing good. How are you? Not bad. Glad to be here for our first ever uh, Monday night primetime episode that's right dude yeah it's great <laughs> if you're uh, if you're joining us in the chat thanks for uh you know being an athlete with the time changes and the, the tweets and all that so glad to have you here if you are a one more game podcast loyalist thank you for all your support we are slowly but surely growing and it's all thanks to use guys uh so yeah. just throw out Appreciate some the support yeah for sure all right man Last week was pretty heavy, so this week we're just gonna we're gonna keep it light. It'll be a quick episode, and uh, we can just have some fun. What we're gonna talk about today, chat, is your guilty pleasures in gaming. So this was a, a topic that was brought up in one of our listener emails a little while back, but I thought it would be fun to get in here and just kind of talk about the games that you kind of play behind closed doors. You know, like what are the, what's the saying about mopeds? Yeah. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> We want to know what games you play that you just you just love. A lot of fun, but you really don't want anyone to know about it. And we're we're gonna we're gonna treat this like the trust tree, right? And then the little nest, and uh, you can That's tell right. us. So, chat, just start spouting out. Just just let that weight off your shoulders. Let us know. You know, is it Hello Kitty's Island Adventure, My Little Pony dress up? Whatever we don't yeah, care. Door the Explorer. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Who knows what it is? <laughs> Whatever it is, we're in the trust tree. It's fine. Yeah, we're there. Sweet dude. So uh, if you're a avid listener, go ahead and reach us on uh, Twitter or Instagram, OMG underscore podcast GG, and let us know uh, what you're playing as your guilty pleasure, and uh, we'll kind of make you feel accepted and let you know you're not the only one who really loves those. Uh, you know paper mache dress up games on steam cool what about you man what's going on in your in your world anything I, I get to see you in real life in a few days yeah i was gonna say we better keep the episode short you gotta start packing dude yeah uh we got a you know we got an epic weekend coming up supporting our, our uh, good buddy easy we're gonna all be in uh san diego starting wednesday which is gonna be so fun uh, yeah obviously it's gonna be a great time um other than that after we get back from san diego i got family in town my uh shannon's cousins and nieces show up saturday my sister her kids i.e my nephews and nieces uh show up sunday with my mom and dad so we have like 10 extra people in our house it's gonna be crazy but it's gonna be awesome oh boy Love family here yeah nothing uh nothing makes the house feel more uh cozy than cramming it full of family and yeah yeah should be a good time Something. sweet man yeah i'm looking forward to the wedding uh i am unfortunately leaving the family behind but you know yeah yeah we we wish we could see him obviously uh but we'll we'll see uh if not before we'll see you in october because we got some big plans for uh yeah, yeah. in october yeah you know we've started looking at plane tickets and we're like holy cow <laughs> yeah so maybe it's just expensive. you should go when you got two kids and they both need airline seats now yeah cool dude well with that being said we will get into the news for the week all right man it's been a fast and furious game or uh, week in gaming uh, a bunch of stuff happening kind of late game so we'll just we'll just rattle through these but Raven Software QA, so the guys, their quality assurance team behind some of the uh, the Call of Duty games that come out every so often, is officially the first group of software developers to unionize from a major AAA studio in the United States, which is kind of mind blowing to me. Like it seems like there's unions in everything except for Amazon, right? But yeah, it's kind of surprising the video game industry has been able to hold out this long. What are your thoughts here? I honestly don't know. So, you know, I've, I've watched a few movies, old school movies of people unionizing. I don't really, I, to be honest, I'm not quite sure what that means as far as uh, um, 
you know, how that works for workers versus the, you know, studio as a whole. I'm assuming it's probably good news uh, for the workers themselves because I'm assuming they have what feels like probably a little bit more control. Uh, but if you know if you know more as far as what a union actually means, I've never never actually dealt with it or done any research. So yeah, I mean unions one way or the other. I mean we're not going to get political with it, but essentially it gives the workers, in this case the QA workers, a voice that they can go to bargaining tables with and make legally binding agreements with the company rather than just working onesie like individual employees against the company which gives them a lot more power Um, is it like the nflpa yeah pretty much kind of thing yeah yeah Yeah, all all the sports industries most of them have them so it's it's very similar but yeah i mean artists especially like their voice there's so many artists in in this in this day and age that their voice is very underheard when they're just one of them so now it kind of starts giving them a little bit of uh clout when it comes to the bargaining table and it's especially it. interesting that it's com- coming out of you know the place that's been having so many problems with workers rights right so right interesting uh we've been i know you and i've been talking about blizzard for a while with this kind of stuff but it kind of seems like moving in the right direction, right? Like caring about their workers, caring about the culture. Bringing in uh, people that, that have dealt with this and care, obviously, like we talked about, I think it was last week in the news where they hired that, uh, that chick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be uh, like the I can't remember her name, main, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's like the chief of uh, culture over there now, so that's, yeah. Yeah. I think we're starting to see moves in the right directions, um, but we'll we'll see. Yeah. All right, man. Let's move on. We we'll stop talking crap about Blizzard like we always yeah. seem to do. It's just every single week. <laughs> All right. If you're an AT and T subscriber, you can now play Control for free via their streaming service in partnership with Google. So if you haven't played Control, it's a really like cool third person action style um kind of sci-fi game that's on ps5 and xbox series x and it looks really really good like it's one of the first games to just go all out with ray tracing Uh, okay but you can stream that for free if you have at&t so that's kind of cool well i have at&t but not playstation 5 or an xbox series x so what do i do oh you can do it on your phone Oh, or really? Your, or your iPad or whatever you have their service with. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Love that. Yeah. Even, I think you can even do it. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can do it on your phone, iPads. And that's about all they say. But All right. Well, Pickle Matt says it's a creepy story. So I don't know that I want to play anymore. Yeah. I mean, but he said it's incredible, dude. It's creepy, yeah. not not scary. It's not pop out and scare you. Okay. So you got this, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get one in of there. these one of these days, we're just gonna have an episode where you're just forced to glue your eyes open, and you're gonna <laughs> yeah. you're gonna watch the scariest games, Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. Well, if you haven't played it, go check it out. If you're an ATT customer, because it's for free. Yeah, it's awesome. All right, here's. I told you we were going to stop talking about Blizzard, but another thing just popped up that we got to talk about. So, I don't know if you played Hearthstone at all, but it's free to play, and uh, it's a it's a collectible card game, much like Magic or Pokemon, but it's all digital. There's no physical uh, cards. Well, they've been selling this digital card, right? Something that doesn't exist, individual card for twenty five bucks. Right, and they, okay. it's it's all super decked out. It's all diamond edition, they call it. So you can literally go on there and buy it for twenty five real dollars, or your doll hairs. And uh, <laughs> well, what ended up happening was this card was way too powerful, so they nerfed it, and then everyone was like, "What the f did I pay you twenty five dollars for?" And so yeah. now they're now they're refunding everybody for this pay to win card that they introduced to their free to play game 
makes well, that's sense. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, get out of here. What are we doing? I don't know, man. Um, I I have not played Hearthstone. I know you you play it. Uh, I've seen Craig on there before. Um, I have not personally played it. I don't know that I would buy a card for twenty five dollars. But again, I say that, and I spent a lot of money on COD packs back in you know oh, just yeah. a few months ago. So there's no real telling what I will spend my money on. If it looks cool, I I will probably buy it. You know, that is your prerogative. And uh, until us gamers unite and stop buying these cool things, they're going to keep doing it to us. <laughs> Maybe yeah, we need exactly. to make a, a gamers union. Yeah, a we ga- got to unionize, dude. A gamers association. That's right. All right. So if you bought this thing for some reason, oh, yeah, caveat, total blizzard move. They're not going to give you $25 back. They're going to give you 3,000 gold inside of Hearthstone. Of course they are. Yeah. yeah. But makes sense. total good guy move, they're going to let you keep the card that's crappy now that it's nerfed. So there Yeah, you go. sick. Of course they will. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I said they were moving in the right direction, but I don't know now. Yeah. All Different right. departments, you know? Let's talk about this. So this is not necessarily brand new news, but uh, Apex Legends, I know you dabbled a little bit, you and I. Uh, yep. it's on mobile now. It's a completely autonomous core mags. Thanks for the follow, man. Thanks. Uh, thank you for the follow. And we really appreciate the support. All right. So what are your thoughts on these kind of games on your phone? I don't know. I think I tried to play, um, what's up crisis crisis. Uh, thanks for the follow. Thanks man. for the follow. Um, dude, I think I tried to play, I don't, I don't know if it was PUBG. There was a first person shooter back. I don't, it was a few oh, years yeah. ago or yeah, and a they couple came out years with a ago. Mobile version. And there was a mobile version and I tried to play it and I, it's just, it didn't make sense in my brain how to control it on the screen, you know, cause there's obviously a lot of controls that go into each of these. Um, right. Battle Royale games oh yeah the uh, button that, the, I, it's very complex that, i feel like you can't really just do with your thumbs right so you, it's kind of a plug for your uh the backbone yeah you know something like that to give you some more more buttons to push yeah i know uh butter toast brought this up but uh it he was said, PUBG. oh yeah that. thank you they made a mobile and i think call of duty yeah. also made a mobile yeah but yeah, I'm going to try Apex out on the backbone and talk about it next week just to just to check it out cuz I mean it's free. I've got the equipment, so to speak. Yeah. Might as well. Sweet dude, and then one last uh, little plug for your battle royales out there. I don't know if you know much about GeForce Now. Essentially, it's um Nvidia's version of uh Xbox Game Pass or Google Stadia, like a a streaming gaming service. So NVIDIA has one called GeForce Now, and finally, so you can basically play anything they offer via the cloud on your phone or tablet or whatever. Um, It seems like every company is trying to make this work, but now Fortnite is finally available on that platform, which is another way that you can play Fortnite on an Apple device without Apple's permission. So that's awesome. Nice. There you have it, dude. Good news, because good news, because we love that game. Your Tell guilty, you your guilty pleasure of Fortnite is now all over. It is available anywhere. Yeah. Cool, dude. We got some guilty pleasures rolling in. Let's 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 shout some of these out. So, uh, old old pal Joe here says he plays this paint by numbers game. Uh, you just click away, painting pretty flowers on my phone because I don't have. I, talent. <laughs> I do. Shannon and I both have that app, and we do the no same. Way. Thing. Absolutely, it's <laughs> like I don't know when you just want to like relax on the couch and you're not really paying attention to anything. It's nice to paint this beautiful picture just by clicking on certain containers based on the numbers. I <laughs> I do it too, Joe. I'm with you. Nice. Let's see what else we got up in there. Uh, Beetleborg says he watches his wife play a Disney Candy Crush game. What? That's a thing. I gotta go. Yeah, I'm, su- I'm surprised Jen and you aren't don't have that already. If Jen's listening, she's gonna be downloading that right now. Yeah. Oh, uh, nice. Well, 
There you go. There you have it. A couple of them rolling in there. Yeah. Sweet, dude. Got anything else for the news? We'll, or we'll just roll right along. Let's get into it. All right. It's time for our games radar for the week. Okay. Not necessarily releasing anytime soon, but something really cool was just announced. Let me see if I can get our uh, browser working here real quick, like. Um, but if you are a fan of games like Hearthstone or Gwent. Oh, I love Gwent. Gwent, dude. I spent so much time on that game. Well, here you have it. Marvel Snap is a long-awaited collectible card game from the former Hearthstone lead developer. So he's one of the main dudes. That uh, kind of brainchild Hearthstone. He yeah. left the company a while back and is now working for um, a company, Byte Dance Gaming, uh, under their arm, Newverse, and they are making a game called Marvel Snap. And so essentially, it's the Marvel Universe in a card game. But the the big difference between a lot of these other games is it's it's molded to be like very. Um, casual and player friendly so the games are only like three to four minutes long rather than like a 20 minute hearthstone game okay so a couple of uh you know little screenshots here very reminiscent of the hearthstone art style mixed with comic book art but i mean who doesn't love them some marvel characters on cards absolutely absolutely like there's no shot i don't try this on my phone Yeah, it feels like in this day and age, if you, like, I feel like probably almost 100%. Well, I should, all right, let's be (laughs) realistic. Probably about 80% of the world is a Marvel fan. I know. I mean, it's it's hard to, it's hard to dislike Marvel. It's funny how the (laughs) movies and stuff they put out. These movies were able to take one of the most nerdy hobbies, comic books, and oh, yeah. make it a completely mainstream concept. So mainstream. <laughs> yeah. Everyone loves it and does not care. You know, back in the day, if you were a comic book reader, you probably you probably had that core group of friends that read comics with you. But other than that, you didn't advertise that. No. Now everyone is <laughs> like, oh, dude, you going to see the most recent Marvel movie? Absolutely. Of course. Yeah, and they all know the lore, right? They all know how the movies oh, intertwine, yeah. and we got these shows, and so every, the, like you said, seventy nine percent of the Earth is just complete Marvel oh, nerds. <laughs> Loco, yeah, cool. Well, that sounds cool, and uh, I'm looking forward to giving that a shot. And if you're you're a Marvel fan and a card game fan, and you have a phone, this is going to be right up your alley. But. This guy, I think his name is Justin Brody, something like that. He he was the Blizzard veteran. Um, dude, he's, if you look at interviews with him, whether it be Hearthstone or whatever, he's like one of the most passionate uh, developers I've ever seen. Like, he's just like a kid in a candy shop when it comes to talking about games. That's awesome. Yeah, so I, it's good to know that, that someone like that is behind this. I, I don't think he'll uh, kind of let that go astray, but we'll see. Yeah. No uh no release date that I could find. Cool beans. All right, let's move on to a couple real games coming out this week. And by real games, I mean not games you've probably heard of. It's going to be kind of a rough one, but I, I I tried to find some gems for you guys, so there's a game coming out on the 25th of May on all platforms called Roller Champions. So, think uh Rocket League meets roller derby but with high fidelity graphics and uh yeah oh interesting it'd just be a and i mean it, it's got some crazy looking like cinematic feel to it so there must be some kind it, maybe it's kind of got an overwatch feel with the characters but dude it's like the oh dude it looks like the game from alita oh yeah it does you know, I don't know anything other than these screenshots, but it looks like that game that they play when they're just like hanging out on the streets or whatever. And All right. Here's a little uh, trailer rolling. I don't really know if it gives you much in the way of gameplay, but it could be a, a fun little thing to check out. It looks like it's got a decent amount of money behind it, so 
We'll see. Oh, I, I bet it's pretty cool. It it kind of reminds me, just graphics wise, um, and not necessarily concept, but obviously I talked about previously Knockout City. Oh yeah. Uh, as far as like the dodgeball version of this, obviously right. this is probably this probably has more uh, some different aspects to it, right? Because you're on skates and doing tricks and whatever, but. It seems to be some sort of ball, so I don't know exactly what's going on, but dude, it might be this might be kind of cool, a little fun uh, thing to check dude, out. It looks. It, <laughs> we talked about this a couple weeks ago. It looks like the roller derby Quidditch. There it is. Boom. <laughs> there it is. Uh, you had me at anything Quidditch. Yeah. All right, man, moving on. We got a game, a little game called Catalyst Black. So this is only on mobile and an, or, uh, iOS, so Android and iOS. Um, but <laughs> I picked this because it's got straight out of Fortnite, like, looking graphics. Like, look at this. Mm, that's too big. So it's like Fortnite meets, um, like, Top-down shooter? I don't know. It's kind of strange. Oh, weird. Yeah, I'm only seeing like half the screen or a quarter yeah, of the screen. Yeah, I kind of screwed that up. but uh, It's fine. It it looks cool. Yeah, it looks like you can be co-op and uh, think like Diablo-style like yeah. gameplay meets Fortnite graphics. So it kind of looks kind of cool, honestly. Yeah. Uh, but I can guarantee you, based on this little screen here, that this is going to be a pay-to-win game, just knowing what I know about uh, mobile games. It looks kind of, because uh, Nana F16 brought up Asteroids earlier, it looks to me, based on just first like, yeah. video presence, it looks like, you know, you probably start off with like a pistol or whatever, and right. then based on how many mobs or whatever you can upgrade your guns to get like the spray or what you know missiles whatever um i don't know if that's true because i have not played it yeah there you go but i mean that's, that's kind of what it looks like to me modern day first glance. asteroids yeah and obviously a little bit more 3d right not right still still top down but a uh, little bit more maneuvering as far as where people are coming from and stuff yeah graphically this looks freaking awesome yeah, it looks very cool. Very colorful, vivid. Got that Fortnite feel. Yeah. Like trying to get some of that Fortnite money. But uh, yeah, that's there you have it. Dude. <laughs> Catalyst Black. That's uh, on Android and iOS. That comes out on the 25th as well. Okay. All right. Well, last one, dog. P- uh, Pac-Man Museum Plus. This comes out on kind of your older uh, generation stuff. PC, Switch, Xbox One, PS4 on the 27th and it's exactly what it sounds like it's a bunch of pac-man games jammed into one so all right there you, there you have it there's your games radar for this week sweet what about the swift radar besides the wedding we talked about family anything else no dude I'm trying to relax the next couple of days because you know me. I'm very much the introvert that needs my alone time yeah. to decompress, and I'm not going to get any of that for at least a solid week and a half. So yeah, that's I'm, kinda... I'm chilling. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Like, you know, you're excited because you know you're going to have fun, but a part of you is kind of like stressing out about the fact that you're just going to be go 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 for. Yeah, exactly. Uh, up on our radar, we're going to be. Uh, driving to disney world for jen's birthday wow spending a week there and then driving back so that's a trek with two little ones it's gonna be full up you and i will have to talk about how we want to make the uh the episode next week work maybe i can do it maybe we can do a live stream in front of the castle but uh we'll see there we go i irl dude yeah we'll talk about disney games there you have it episode 14 disney games oh i already have the best one Lion King, go. (laughs) No, no, no. No spoilers, dude. Uh, Mufasa dies. Hashtag no spoilers. (laughs) All right, man. Good talk. Games Radar, Life Radar. That's what we got for you. 
Cool. Are you ready to move on to our major topic? Oh yeah. All right, guys. We've been uh, we've been tiptoeing around it, but we're going to talk about guilty gaming pleasures. Your dirty little games that you hide in the closet that you don't want your friends to know about. That's what we're about to get into. All right, dude. We already talked to you, chat, but start throwing it out there. What what do you got? You, I know there's more out there. You're probably playing one right now that you're hiding on your Discord status. Like, don't show my status when I'm playing X game. I just, sorry, before before we dive too far, because I'm sure let, let's let people, you know, marinate and see if they want to uh, let us know what they're doing. But uh, Joe mentioned a great idea as far as having you do a uh, hotel bathtub stream. Oh, yeah. The, you know, is, like the hot tub streams. Is the so. bathtub meta now? I think it might be. Okay. Uh, we'll, <laughs> see, we'll see about that. Um, I don't know how many people are into dad bods, but I got one. <laughs> cool, dude. All right. Here we are. Guilty gaming pleasures. Like I said before, if you're listening, go ahead and leave us a tweet or Insta. OMG underscore podcast GG. And let us know what you're playing that you don't want anyone to know about. And then you can feel free. That weight will be off your shoulders. You'll That's feel right. like a new person. You can play your game out and in the open. No one needs to judge you. It's all good in the hood. So Swift, mm-hmm. here's your chance. Let us know. There's got, I know Dude, there's, there's got to be a weirdo one. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That, I mean, I'm sure some of these are weird. I, I had to think about this pretty... Um, pretty hard as yeah, far you're, as you're like pretty, what you're pretty what, mainstream these days i am dude i like when we're not we played cod for a long time now i'm playing fortnite um destiny obviously is not one very mainstream and those are kind of the the games that i stick to these days uh, i will say on my switch and on my xbox downstairs i have some that i thought of uh dude the first one that came to mind when i was thinking about it is is pokemon because it's very much a kids game right oh yeah and it's bu- it's built for for kids but i still i still play them i still love them i haven't beat uh pokemon sword yet i kind of just you know fall into a lull where i don't turn my switch on and that's what right. it's on so uh but i still really enjoy that game just i have to pick it up when i you know get back in- into it every once in a while uh, so I think Pokemon is is kind of the biggest one. That's the one that that popped out in my nugget right off the bat. You know what I um, love about about Pokemon, and we we kind of yeah. complain uh, complain that it kind of does the same thing that it always does. But I'm starting to think I kind of like that because no matter what, no matter how long you've let it sit on the shelf, you can just jump right back in, and you know the buttons, you know exactly what you're doing. Yeah, for sure. And obviously, it's a very slow post or slow paced game right right so it's not like you're jumping into elden ring after a four month break and being like dude i don't know what is happening right now. right um so that that's the biggest one in my mind that popped out uh i have a few others it, not necessarily so the the second one that came to mind was wow back in the day in college when i would straight up <laughs> hide in my dorm room no one knew that i played wow uh, but I played it a lot uh, when I wasn't out drinking and getting in trouble in college. Yeah, what was um, your what was your hot key to minimize it when someone came in? <laughs> Alt Alt F four. Alt F four. You like no no chances, not taking any risks. No, yeah, I don't no want him, risks, I don't want them to hear the sounds or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that was obviously a big one for a lo- for a long time in my life, uh, specifically through college. Um, the other ones aren't, I don't, again, I couldn't really think of guilty gaming pleasures these days other than, you know, some more kind of kids game. So I have Donkey Kong Country on my Mm. Switch. Very much a kids game, but still so fun. Like riding that cart across train tracks and having to figure out when to jump. You know, it's, it's such a good game. And then the, uh, other two from kind of my childhood are, uh, Spyro, because mm. Shannon, Shannon and I will play Spyro every once in a while, um, and then Crash Bandicoot again. 
it was a mainstream game not right. really anymore um and then the last one i kind of added at the very end after looking at my steam library is uh i know there was a huge following right off the bat but it's kind of it's most certainly died down uh but fall guys yeah just because like i don't they got the little guys are so cute and they just jump around all nimbly bimbly and uh, <laughs> you know not necessarily a guilty pleasure but still just kind of a game on the shelf that i don't play all that often that every once in a while is is fun to hop into nice what uh so that being said what is it like being a a big bad fighter pilot but also being now a game podcaster openly in the public like are you just that comfortable with your your gamerhood these days that it, it doesn't bother you I am that comfortable. I actually, I was sitting top three today and uh, I was sitting next to our one Charlie Lisa and we were talking and one of the other one, the, one of the other SARMs was talking about um, he needs to find a side hustle, right? Because, you know, he's in enlisted duty, he's not making a ton of money. So he's right. like, I, I want something else to to help me make money. And he's like, maybe I should start a YouTube channel or whatever. And I, I looked over and I was like, Dude, I like I stream every once in a while. I haven't done it in a little while, uh, which we continue to address here on the podcast. But I, <laughs> I enjoy streaming when I am playing video games, despite not doing it very often. And I was like, and my buddy and I, uh, Taze, we started a podcast, and all of them like looked at me and were like, "What? What?" And no kidding, last class, uh, the class that just gra- graduated at the beginning of May, they found my. I don't know how. I think Shannon might have mentioned it that I was on Twitch, oh, no. and they they found my Twitch channel and uh, roll call. Were, were <laughs> oh yeah, just making fun of me. You know, oh dude, you're such a nerd, blah, blah blah. But at this point in my life, it's like, yeah, I am, and I I have I'm not trying to hide it anymore. <laughs> I I enjoy I enjoy playing video games. I stream from I again. I swear every week I say this, I want to stream more. I just don't <laughs> typically have the time. Um, so, but they, they found it. They thought it was hilarious that we uh, started a podcast. And I was just like, yeah, dude, like we're, I don't know. We're, we're doing it. Yeah. And, and that's it. Screw them. You know? Yeah. You just go with your, uh, your hobbies and your passions and don't let anyone make you. Yeah, feel exactly. Bad. Right. Why, why would I feel bad about doing something that I, you know when i'm home if shannon's not home i'm up here from like 30 minutes after i get to work until i need to go to bed right (laughs) so like why why be ashamed of that or feel self-conscious about anything like that yeah i remember being younger and like you know you kind of even though gaming was kind of normal it wasn't normal to like openly talk about gaming as we were kind of growing up so i was a little more shy about it yeah but now who cares? 35 years old almost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. I mean, I got, I got, <laughs> if you don't know who you are at this point, yeah. And you're trying to hide something as dumb as that, right? I mean, there's really no, there's no shame in it. Like, right. <laughs> we're not out in the yard doing drugs. There you go. There's, there's, there's no shame to gaming. So, unless, like, unless if, we're playing, if you're not comfortable uh, enough. We are playing GTA Five. We are definitely are doing that. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for <laughs> sure. All right, man. Those are some pretty good ones. Any any other uh, any other thoughts on guilty pleasures? Nerdy guilty oh, pleasures. Maybe when you tell yours, I'll come up with another okay. one. But that's oh. all I could come up with off the top of my nugget. Here's what I'll have you think about while I'm talking. Also, like nerdy TV shows that you that you watch. All right. Okay. All right, so I'll get into mine. I'm not, I was going to throw this one out there, but I don't really even think it's a guilty pleasure anymore because I'm not trying to, like, I play this thing out in the open, openly. I'm posting highlights and stuff. Fortnite, I think I consider it a guilty pleasure because I talked smack about it for so long. Um, but, you know, that one's out in the open. So I'll talk about the real, the real one that I've been hiding from all my friends. This is the only game that I, make myself uh appear offline for when i play it's league of legends <laughs> yeah 
I it's love so that funny game. to me that you say that. <laughs> it's so good. Because you just openly hated, hated it against it. <laughs> League of Legends for so many years. Yeah. <laughs> that show, Arcane, was a gateway drug for my League of Legends because... So I went in, I watched the show, I really liked the story. I was like, oh, these characters are really cool. So I'm like, all right, I'll go check this game out. And I only yeah. played the characters from the show. And then all of my, like, gaming, the things that I love about HOTS kind of kicked in. And then I realized, like, I was pretty decent at League of Legends just based on playing HOTS for so long. Yeah. Then I just started loving it. But there it is. It's out in the open. There it is. I'll uh I'll I'll make myself appear online when I play from now on, guys. <laughs> and if you want to play league with me, you know what I, I I love the toxicity. Everyone complains about the toxicity, but I just thrive in it. Like I love when people start just getting all worked up about something as stupid as a video game. I just like to join in the banter. Yeah. Along those same lines, this one's kind of funny cuz it's uh, Pokemon Unite, that's their MOBA that's on uh, mobile and Switch. Oh, yeah. I don't ever play this on my own, but anytime Liam asks to play it, typically when we're like somewhere where we have to wait and he needs to be still and quiet, think like lines at a DMV or whatever, you know, yep. um, or waiting for our seats at a restaurant and I just need him to like not zip, zip all over the place. He's like, can I play that Pokemon game? I'm like, sure. He starts playing it and like, you know, he's he's young, so he doesn't he just runs away from anything that's not his teammates. And I'm like, yeah. all right, here, no, let me show you how to play. And then like four minutes later, the game's over, we've won. I have the highest stats. <laughs> like I'm like, I kinda like this game. I'm beating yeah. up on these little kids. <laughs> yeah, it's got, exactly. <laughs> it's got Pokemon, it's a MOBA, everything relates really well to Heroes of the Storm. It it's very much like Heroes of the Storm in the gameplay. And how simple okay. it is. Um, and it's just entertaining. But I, ha- I have yet to play it on my own without Liam being involved. But. All right. Yeah, just like you, dude. WoW was kind of like my secret uh, back in college for sure. Um, but, you know, that eventually went away. Here's one that I'd never really talked to anyone about. This is just like a total passion thing that I used to do. Have you ever seen Skyrim mods? Yes. Okay, I used to spend hours and hours and hours modding Skyrim. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing about modding Skyrim is you don't ever actually end up playing the game. You just keep adding more and more mods to it and then you'll log in to like look at it and you're like, oh, this looks really cool. Oh, I want to get this other one. And then you're, and it takes a lot of work to like get all the files and crap working. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) So you end up spending hundreds of hours modding it playing it for like an hour because you already beat the game right so nothing's nothing's yeah um although there are some pretty crazy player made like expansions out there for skyrim that are pretty good yeah i play i played skyrim i know i think you've mentioned to me before about as far as the modding and stuff i've seen right. the mods um but that was most certainly not what i was doing just trying you know <laughs> Just trying to beat the game. You were just fuss roda. That's right. Sweet dude. Those are my guilty pleasures. And uh Oh, here's my TV guilty guilty pleasure. And I only watched this with my wife. But after I started watching it with her for a long time, I was like really into it. I knew all the characters' names and what the drama was going on. But pretty yeah. li- pretty little liars. <laughs> I got oh, so hooked into that nice. show. Nice. Yeah. I actually I watched that show for a long time too, honestly. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh Crisis says Minecraft. He was he was all about that, but it was kind of cool. It was kind of mainstream, but it was it was mostly for kids, so you were probably an adult. So Yeah, I've I've never played Minecraft. I know, should, I know a lot of people that game with us have, um, so. Yeah, when, when it came out on Switch, I played it actually quite a bit, built up my little empire, and then uh, I started realizing there was like a boss, like you had to 
kind of build your way into this like nether world and there ended up being like this giant dragon and I stopped playing at that point. <laughs> yeah. Giant dragon made out of eight bit bricks. Not yeah, funny. exactly. <laughs> all right. All right. So there's our guilty pleasures. Long story short, guys, play what makes you happy. Don't worry about anyone else. Don't worry about yeah. us. Don't worry about your work, your, your friends who think they're cool because all they do is go to work and mow the lawn. Anything else you got behind the scenes? No. Eats plays that Minecraft looking game all the time. Spent six hours playing it one day while I was visiting them in DC. Is he referring to Valheim? I think, I think he's talking about Valheim. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that one's pretty popular though. I wouldn't call that a, a guilty pleasure. Yeah, that's why I didn't add it. Yeah, he's pretty open about it too. Joe, you just need to get on board. Yeah, just buy a PC, Joe. Yeah, Stop we're arguing with us. I'm, I'm tired of having to make in game chat work with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so there it is. Guilty pleasures. You guys sent them in. We talked about them. We're all we're all feeling good and confident about ourselves. Good enough to talk about what we played this week. All right. All right. I'm gonna let you go first this time. I'm gonna let you finish. Okay. No, I'll go, go first. You go. Um, for me, what I played this week again, it was it was a fairly benign week of gaming for me. Um, I don't think I turned my computer on from the podcast on Sunday last week until like Wednesday, uh, for whatever reason. Oh wait, I know the we- the reason because we turn our AC off in the middle of the day, and my and this room is upstairs. Oh uh, yeah, and it's over the garage, and. And that PC the second, is pumping out. The second out. I sit down with the PC on, I am immediately sweating. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's going to be a long summer dealing with that, but it's fine. Uh, so I'll start with Heroes of the Storm. We played Heroes of the Storm this week. Uh, always a good time. We've talked about it numerous times. Um, a lot of ARAM because we're... At least I am not quite in fighting form for like the, you know, ranked or unranked actual draft modes. Uh, yeah. Trying to it, get there. It's not as fun. I'll be honest. The ARAM? No, ARAM is more fun than the actual game. Oh, yeah. I think ARAM is great. I have, yeah. a, I have a great time. Um, cool. After that, I played some Valheim. Um, I get a little overwhelmed with Valheim because I've never played a game quite like it where you have to like build a house and collect all these materials and then you have to move because you don't want your house to be so far away. <laughs> right? So you have to move and you have to build a new house and I, I found myself like collecting mats and then getting overloaded so I would just build I found a new place finally I carved out an area I haven't built my new house yet um, but I'm working towards it. Uh, but again, a little overwhelming for me just because I'm not familiar with the that type of gameplay necessarily. And there's uh, no, there's no like, that. it doesn't direct you into any, like... No, you literally just wander. <laughs> you're making these decisions on your own and it feels a little too, like, close to real life. You're like, I gotta build yeah. a house. I gotta, I gotta keep myself fed and, yeah. Not only do I have to build a house, but I have to build a house where, like, where it's important, right? And I don't even really know where the next area is. Yep. So, yeah. A uh, little overwhelming, but I'm, I'm working on it. I'm fighting, fighting through the pain. Uh, Fortnite <laughs> is the other one. Uh, one of the other ones, I should say. Fortnite, again, can't, can't harp on it enough. It's great with the no build. So fun. I got in there with a, a few different groups this week. Uh, we got, I got a uh, win and then came in third in my next game. So not quite a crown, crown, wow, crown win. Uh, so still sitting at two of those. Sadly, I got to get my numbers up. Um, yeah, and then uh, second to last, got a war. 
still playing, still loving it. A lot of like really cool puzzles in there uh, as far as where to go, where to put things uh, to, to progress. And then the last one I'll talk a little bit more about, Destiny. We finally... Dude. Finally raided uh, with a group. Uh, it was Taze myself, and I'm sure he'll talk more in depth as far as the, the actual raid. Taze myself. Um, who was our third from America? Uh, hey. Oh, Nam Tuo. Nam Tuo, that's right. Nam Tuo was there. Um, and then we had three guys from that were our station in South Korea. Or South Korea, and they joined us, and it was a. Those guys were all so hungover from the night before because we're playing <laughs> on Friday night. It's Saturday morning for them. They're talking about the shakes from being so hungover, <laughs> trying to do uh, this raid. Trying to do the raid. It it's a it was a great time. A lot of very cool puzzles as far as when you actually get to the encounters. Uh, Taze can talk more that, about that, but I had a very good time. We beat the first encounter. Uh, struggled in the second because we were losing focus because those dudes had already started drinking uh, <laughs> Again. To, for, for the for the sweep later that a- afternoon slash evening. Uh, so once it kind of digressed to dude, nobody's actually paying attention to the mechanics of the fight. We called it, um, but it it was a great time in in that yeah, raid for sure. What's it? Vow of the disciple is what it's called. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So it w- it was so fun. I want to get back in there. Yeah, obviously, it's addictive, uh, right? <laughs> when you get with, with a yeah with a crew of six that's focused and not just trying to survive. <laughs> uh, but it was a, it was a good time. Yeah, I'm all for it. Whenever you guys want to raid, I'm on board. Yeah, and that all was right. it for me. Cool, dude. Well, I get into mine. A lot of them are the same, but it was a jam-packed exciting gaming week for me so i'll talk a little bit about fortnite first i think last week i ended the episode saying that my fortnite experience was over and that i was yeah I was, you, you sure did well that is not true and something finally clicked earlier today or yesterday i can't remember but i started getting the kills you know seven kills a game in solos uh, yeah the aiming and like the the button pressing is starting to make more sense now and kind of like you know how the physics work and all that so yep i'm back on the fortnite train i, I really want to play right now <laughs> <laughs> uh, well i know i crisis uh <laughs> crisis is trying to play something uh a little yeah. bit later i think so okay. he hit, he hit me up at work and was like you going to be on later and i was like uh maybe after the podcast cool beans well, count me in. All right. Yeah, I'll talk more about Destiny. So we, we, we completed. We made some progress. It only took us about two hours to beat the first encounter. Uh, yeah. Which is pretty good considering one guy had never played any organized thing in the game. Uh, and the other three, like you alluded to, were... You know, doing what you do in uh, Korea as a as a pilot. So, but we 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 finally banded together, and when we finally got that third set of runes on the right pillar, and we're like, we're gonna get it this time. And I'm like, please shoot the right ones. And you guys are like, you got it. It's on ours. And you just hear that, and it says something like plunder has dropped or whatever over here. And you see the loot. You just, I was so proud. I felt like, oh a, yeah. It was awesome. I felt like Coach Carter. That's what I felt like. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But if you haven't raided in Destiny, it's so cool. Like the way that they make you figure stuff out and work together and have to deal with stuff that you weren't expecting and people die and you revive them and somebody has to do something that they weren't planning on doing to stitch it all together. And in the end, you figure it out. If it, it's the same feeling you get if you've ever done a, um, a difficult uh, escape room. Yeah. Yeah, it's that same feeling when you if you get it, it's like, dude, we're the best. We're the smartest people ever. We're the best gamers on the planet. Oh, the smartest people alive. <laughs> cool, but yeah, enough said about that. I can't harp on how fun that 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 is the 
the best form of that game when it's at its finest is when you're raiding. Yeah. Cool. Uh, we'll get that next boss down. He, we, we got the concepts. It's just people started falling apart. You, yeah. you, you and I were following off the map. And yeah. Cool. All right, I did get into Apex Legends a little with uh, Buttered Toast. We were playing the arenas instead of the Battle Royale. Have you mm-hmm. played the arenas? Mm-hmm. Way more fun than the Battle Royale, I think. It's gunfight style mechanics. Way more fun, way more fast-paced, for yeah. sure. Yeah, a little more strategic, I think. Um, yeah. So, yeah, had a good time there, and I, I plan on checking that out on the backbone like I talked about, but that game continues to be, uh, you know, something that's easy to... Have some fun playing. All right, this next one, I did it. So I had to return something at Best Buy, and I had some, like, you know, money on my hands. And I was like, what are we going to get? And Liam's like, can we get a game? And I was like, what game are we going to get? So I had just finished setting up the, the Series X in the theater room instead of downstairs so that the, I could get all the features of it, like oh, 4K, yeah. 4K HDR. And then I also hooked up, like, a synchronizing... Um, light strip smart light strip that like knows what the tv is displaying and then it makes the color of the room that ambient color of whatever's on the screen yeah uh and so we played the lego star wars game on our on our theater tv with surround sound and that crazy ambient lighting this game is unbelievable really yeah oh yeah like the gameplay is exactly what you would expect out of a lego game yeah but it looks insane. Like the you can see on the little Lego bricks, like where their arm joints are. There's like they're they get dirty and they get like scuffed, and there's light shining off everything. And the lightsabers are so much fun. Um, if you haven't checked this game out, I'm I'm a I'm on board. Uh, yeah, I want it for sure. Yeah. And it's it's perfect for playing casually with someone like like a, a spouse or like Jen and I were playing while the kids were playing. And then the kids could come in and be like, here, take the controller and you can just hop right in and play with mom or dad and easy swap out. And you can change between all the characters very easily. Kids love these Lego games. Cause they're you, you can not have any attention and, and still have fun. Yeah. Right. But yeah, if you haven't checked out that, that Lego star Wars game, it's really cool. Uh, All right, here's some just craziness that happened for me in gaming, but I got the Steam Deck, and if you're wondering why I'm not showing it to you right now, it's because I plan on doing uh, an unboxing slash uh, full review on our YouTube channel, Um, One More Game Podcast on YouTube, Uh, but I played three games on this, and I'm just mind blown that this is a thing. So Elden Ring two games you haven't played before, right? Yeah, two games I haven't played at all. I I was just like, oh, it's on Steam Deck. Install. Well, purchase install. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Elden Ring, I played that one right, and I just hopped right back in, and it had a cloud save working with Steam, and I just picked up right where I left off. And Dude, then that's uh, so cool. That, I was that, sit- that's a thing. Yeah, I was sitting on the couch while Jen was watching uh, her Lucifer TV series. And I love I'm, that show. Do you? Oh, I can't. Yeah. I can't get behind it. I don't know. Uh, notice Daryl yeah. one. Thanks for the follow. That's awesome. Yes. And thanks for yeah, the support. It. We are thirty eight followers, so twelve more to go, guys, to reach Twitch affiliate. That's a big, big step in one more game podcast history. Oh yeah. So spread the news, and uh, we'd be happy to hear from you and your friends at uh, omgpodcastgg at gmail.com. Send us your thoughts, your opinions, the games you want us to play, what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, how much you hate us, how much you love us, how much you love Swift's hat. That's a badass hat. Oh, dude, I love it. I'll, yeah. I'll get you, you one give tomorrow me one? if you want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring it, I'll bring it to San Diego. San Diego. All right. So I, the other two I played were Valheim, which any that could play on anything, but it was just cool that yeah. I was like, oh, this is on here. 
install a couple seconds later it was ready and i'm there yeah you i have think <laughs> i think when i downloaded valheim i don't know that i talked about this initially but you know we're so used to like cod where you download you know a, a 70 gig game i think valheim is 1.17 gigabytes the entirety of the game oh yeah i, I thought i messed something up on the steam deck because it was like I clicked install and then it was like ready to play and I was like, huh? Done. <laughs> yeah. It was it's crazy. And it's a massive map, but obviously the graphics, you know, right, it's right. it's built to be that way. So yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, so you I was you you told me I was full on like on another level of gaming because we were playing Fortnite, I think, and then in between matches while it was waiting for a lobby. I was yeah. playing Valheim on my Steam Deck, <laughs> like yeah. multitasking. Literally between lobbies, uh, Taze would be like, "Okay, so <laughs> how do I build? Swift, how do I build? Like, how do I upgrade my? Oh, now I have a, a bat or whatever a club. it is, a club. Yeah, okay, cool." And I was like, "Are you really playing? You're playing two games at once?" Yes. Sir. And he was like, "Yep, sure am." Hashtag millennial. Yeah. <laughs> Attention cool. span short. Short. Uh, <laughs> cool. And then lastly, I won't say I really played this. All I did was turn it on and see that it worked just to like get the warm fuzzy. But God of War, like you talked about, I had a lot going on when I when it f- was finally done downloading, and I didn't want to like try to play it, but not really give it the attention that I know you guys say that it deserves. So no, you absolutely have to pay attention to the story and the cinematics and everything. Yeah. So good on, good on you for waiting. Right. So I was excited though, when it just like started up, I was like, okay, turn it off. I don't want to. Yeah. Those kind of games I like to like sit down, but I plan on playing that solely on the steam deck and Elden ring as well. Yeah. Pour yourself, pour yourself a nice glass of wine, have yeah. some, you know, uh, meat and cheese and just put your feet up and enjoy the story. Light the candles. That's right. Cool. There you have it. That was my busy gaming week uh, overall. That's going to start to slow down here as I finish up with uh, therapy and head back to work. Um, yeah. But, you know, that's good. I got a, I get a, a decent time to figure stuff out and relax and uh have some have a good time and now i'm addicted to one two three four five six seven <laughs> eight different games at the same all, time <laughs> all the games yeah <laughs> uh cool yeah uh, joe says lucifer is great he's sarcastic and uh cynical so great synergy. oh yeah yeah, yeah I, I love i love that show it's so funny for something about his accent just i don't like mm. the like snobby british accent i don't know oh pickle matt you just brought up a great idea i can play the steam yeah. deck in the car on the way to disney do you need okay so i know we're gonna do an unboxing do you need an internet connection to play it or it depends how on the does game that work it depends on the game that you're playing Okay. So most most games nowadays are like online required. So I'm going to have to kind of I think God of War you probably don't need to be online, but I'll let you know. I haven't uh Well, I know God of War is another cloud-based save. Yeah. That's a good point. I'll check that um, out. I'll I'll get back to you this week on on how that works. Yeah, God of War is cloud-based. So I don't know if you can like pause it, you know, and wait till you get without closing the game. Right. Yeah. If you were on like a short trip, you could play the game and then just pause it and wait till you hit a Wi-Fi to cloud save or is, yeah. So seriously, seems, get back because uh, it seems like it'd know. be kind of a go against the whole funk cool air. Welcome to the chat, dude. We're just what up, talking, dude. We're talking about the Steam Deck a little bit, but we're going to do a whole full episode on, on mobile gaming slash gaming on the go. But I was just, we were just kind of discussing how cross or uh, cloud save works. So, yeah, dude, I'll let you know. Yeah, um, just try it, you know, like yeah. boot the game up at your house and then like walk down the road 
and play and right. see see what happens. I don't know. Whatever, whatever you got. But I'd be it, I'd be very interested to hear if you could do that. No kidding. You know, because they say mobily, right? Right. So, do you just have to start a hotspot on your phone to right, then maybe play it? We'll, I don't we'll know. see. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, dude, I do have to bring this up. I'm going to cover it in the review, but I was able to get so Steam games, Steam library. That's all you know integrated into it, but it also runs on like a Linux, uh, I OS operating. Uh, system yeah. and so you can kind of do a, a a workaround to get xbox game pass cloud working on there so i had fired up fortnite on it i fired up uh halo infinite like so <laughs> technically i can play anything on game pass on this thing and it was awesome very cool yeah yeah that's, mostly that's i, I awesome. spent a lot of time like just firing things up and see if they would work but yeah uh, I'm very oh, disappointed cool. that Destiny is not going to be supported. Uh, but maybe that'll change. Maybe. Cool, dude. Anything else to uh, bring up about your, your gaming week? I don't think so. Cool. Me neither. All right, let's go around the room. What else you got to say to the chat and listeners before we part ways? Um... I'm sure Taze will pile on, but here, here, but, uh, chat, thanks for, you know, always being so supportive. Thanks to the new followers. Obviously, uh, we appreciate you guys. Um, or, and gals, you know, oh, yeah. whatever you are, whatever. Um, so we appreciate the support. Uh, we love doing this, uh, every week and hanging out with you all. And, uh, it's, it's been, fun just like i say every week i i have a great time doing this and again couldn't do it without you know all the all the support in the community and we can't wait to uh continue it and grow a little bit and then you know do some more giveaways like Mm -hmm. a few weeks ago so yeah uh, bruno thanks for hanging out bruno got his uh his 50 dollar steam card from us uh about a week ago and yeah. he's he said he's more of a Steam sale kind of guy. Likes to buy the little games that go on sale. My cat's going ham. Uh, <laughs> so so he said he's gonna get back to us when he kind of picks a good one out on Steam that he used our uh, his winnings on. Perfect. But yeah, guys, we are we're very much appreciative of all the support. And uh, if you're here in the live chat and the live stream, it's it makes it so much more fun to kind of hang out and talk with you guys while we're running this podcast. So appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time out of your uh, gaming schedules to, to talk of gaming with us. And as always, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram, OMG underscore podcast GG. And you can also reach us at OMG podcast GG at gmail.com. Like we talked about earlier, just let us know what you think. If you're listening on Apple podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere else you find your podcast and you like what you hear, Go ahead and share with your friends. And then also, if you don't mind, leave us a review. Um, Let us know what you think about the podcast. Five-star reviews or comments really help us out with discoverability and all that kind of stuff. So I read all your your comments on there. You guys are killing it. Very much appreciate that stuff. And uh, couldn't couldn't not have made it to this point without you guys. We are going to start, you know, growing and putting out some more YouTube uh, content with uh, unboxings and maybe some uh, some game highlights for the uh, bonsai gaming members throughout the week so just want to say from the bottom of my hearts thank you and especially for last week all the support you guys poured out uh, with the everything we talked about with mental health so just reiterate on that if you know someone who's in the need of help be there for them if you need help reach out and uh, we'd love to have you guys join bonsai gaming just search us on the discord bonsai gaming uh it's a the symbol is a little tiger and we will be happy to have you in the discord and game with you guys with that we will leave you with one final thought as you go off to play your uh your guilty pleasure games just because you have to grow up doesn't mean you have to stop playing game on gamers and we'll see you next week on one more game swift see ya see ya